Welcome to part two of this video. If you have not already listened to part one, please go back. Otherwise, you're pretty much catching this video in the middle. I'll have it pinned below so it'll be easy for you to find. You want to get out of that. When you begin to think again about what they did and what you should have said, you say something like, God, I thank you for helping to give me peace. I pray that this person will be blessed by you. I pray that this person will see you as their Lord and Savior. I pray that their minds and their hearts will be changed. You may be having to say that through your teeth because you really don't want to say it. But at the same time, every single time a thought comes to you, you say, I reject the thoughts. I pray that the Lord Jesus will protect me. I pray the angels of God will be around me, form a hedge of protection around me. I do not accept these thoughts. This is not who I am. I am not going to do these evil things. I am not a mass murderer. I will not go and do any, any, do any, any sort of mass, uh, you know, just anything that will be detrimental and fatal. I do not accept these things. And you ask the Lord to lead you to get the help that you need to take those things from you. It may be that it's, you may, some people are having extreme thoughts like that and other people, it's not like that. It's just, they, they, there's just a depression there that could be a heaviness there, anxiety there. But what I want you to understand is that it's all spiritual. It is all spiritual. And that's something that I can't veer from, that I can't forget. It's the same way I experience the very presence of God in situations where it's like the room literally lit, not literally, but the room was dark. I was crying. I talk about this. I have another video. I talk about my supernatural experience being so sad, being so down. Um, it was like very early on in my early 20s. And I was crying and crying and crying a lot. I was in a dark room just really crying. Okay. I want to say wailing. I was crying. And I just remember not really caring. I was alone. I was really crying. I was in a fetal position crying. And it was just like suddenly... In that dark room, I felt a present, a presence that was a light. I felt a presence that was a light, meaning light as in if I, I would have expected to look up and see an illuminating bright light. That is just how even in a dark room that I had turned off all the lights and just wanted to cry, the atmosphere was charged and changed. And in that moment... I knew exactly where the presence was because I, I just, there was no, I can tell. I sat up in the bed and I looked over in the far corner. I felt the charge of the room, the energy, the shift. I knew where the, that, that light was coming from. And in that darkness, I looked and I had it in my mind to say, please help me. Please help me. I said that two times. I was crying, actually. I had that little <laughs> in between, but I had it in me to say, please help me. I said that two times. And when I said that, that was when I fell into a sleep. I felt this most beautiful, beautiful peace and light and everything that just came over me and I went right to sleep and was the best sleep I've ever had in my entire life. The closest thing that's ever come to that feeling, and it's not even close, was when I was in labor with my child. And after so many hours of trying to do it on my own, I got some epidural. And the minute they put that epidural into my spine to help me with the pain it was just this ah uh, and I was just it felt so good and I was able to just sleep 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 until you know it was time to push but um even then I it cannot compare and of course after that day after that encounter that was when my life turned around and God led me and took me 
just helped to bring me out of that funk that I was in and helped me. What I am trying to tell you is if you're living your life and you think that you can ignore the unseen world and you're going to try to do things on your own, yes, you may go to counsel and that's good. You may go to the doctor and they may say this is what we need for this because they do go to school and they know what they're talking about. Um, but if you omit God out of it, or you may, oh, I'm not omitting God, but you are just messing with the higher powers and the universe, then who exactly, what spirit are you getting exactly? You know, there are gods in this world. The Bible talk about gods, but they're little g. They're principalities and powers. They're rulers. They're spiritual wickedness in high places. And I guarantee you those spiritual wickedness is not coming to you as her. Even people who are witches, demons do not come to them in their true form and in their with it with their true intentions. Otherwise there will be no witches, there will be no um worshippers, there'll be no cults. Because it will be too scary to see so they often come as unassuming they often come in an image that would be attractive to the individuals they often come uh, pretending to understand the person but what they often do is that they will ex they will the, the difference between god and devil angels and demons is that when the devil comes and comes as unassuming and caring and the demons and the spiritual wickedness what they do is they magnify your problems they're going to magnify your problems and show you everything that's wrong with you everything that's wrong with people and then they're going to help you to get revenge on these individuals what you need to do to get people back they're often going to lead you and show you how you can do things to hurt them and they're, they basically really feed on your pain. So your hurt, your disappointment, that is what's going to want you to go further and get more and more into the dark arts, into doing things, because truly you don't have peace. You just have a gratification of being able to either control people or being able to get revenge to see someone hurt or having that deep desire. That's what darkness is. Darkness is not going to talk to you about being better in some sense. And even when you're saying that you're manifesting, I did a video about that. You know, people can manifest certain things. You can think there's power in the mind for sure. If you ever have um, Oculus headphones and headset, you use that, your mind is being stimulated, but it affects your body. You know, you watch someone playing that and they just look so odd, but their mind is being stimulated. So with with the power of the mind and with manifesting, you can manifest whatever you want. But when you're manifesting, how, who's bringing those things to you? The idea is to make you think you have the power to bring things to yourself when you really don't. When you're manifesting, you're thinking a certain thing and you're trying to do it without God, without anyone. So basically you're open and what's going to begin to happen, changes are going to take place. There may be something that you're not qualified for. Someone is supposed to have that job, but then you manifest that you want it and you're going to get it. You manifest that someone's going to come back to you. Uh, have you thought about their own will that they may not like you? But okay, you're going to make it happen. And what that begins to do, again, that is one of the things about the powers of darkness, which is manipulating the atmosphere to get people to do what you want, to make them love you, to make certain things happen. People may not believe that, but I digress there. Versus when you are having faith in God, you may say, the, you know, ask God for certain things, have faith in the Lord, in what you would like to see and things that you would like to have. But ultimately having faith is also having faith in God himself, that what you ask for his will is being done. So that means, God, this is what I desire, but I trust and reverence you. I have reverence and respect and faith in you that whatever I ask for, Lord, you will grant it to me. 
However, if you withhold it or you say this is not the this is not the one, this is not the job, I have enough faith in you, God, that whatever your will is, then God, even if it's different from what I desire, so be it. That's the difference. Faith is bringing a matter before God and allowing him to deal with it. And then he may tell you to do certain things in the process. For example, you can't have faith for um, you want to get a job, but then you're not putting in applications or you're not going on job interviews or you're not showing up. You can't have faith and ask God for a job and the things that you want. And then when he gives you that job, you are you now you have the job. You are being lazy. You know, that's another video. So what I'm trying to tell you is the difference between light and dark. How these <laughs> God exists and his angels exist. The devil exists and his demons and fallen angels exist. All right. So when you're in this world and when you're seeing everything that's going on around you, it's not for you to be afraid and to be scared. Because believe me, if they really had the power to destroy us, then things would have been annihilated a long time ago. Now, don't get me wrong, they can. But because we're made in the image and likeness of God, not only are we spirit, we are body, spirit, and soul. And God loves us. And they hate that. Darkness hates that. So what they do is they use God's creative image. He, they use people. They use us to destroy ourselves or to destroy other people. But it's important that you don't forget your creator, that you do not forget about God, and that you're not afraid, but you, every day, you pray and you ask the Lord to help you. There are people who don't believe in any God. They believe in themselves. And for now, right now in their lives, everything may be going perfectly. They're manifesting. Things are going on. Remember Matthew chapter 4. All the kingdoms and the riches of this world, kingdoms and the glories of this world, I'll give to you if you fall down and worship me. That's what Satan's word to Jesus. You will get things in this world. You will manifest and get what you want. You don't have to believe in God. There are things you will get for not believing in God. You don't have to acknowledge the devil. People don't. People think, well, no, I'm not worshiping Satan. I'm not bowing down to him. When you deny God and you deny Jesus, you are by default. You belong to the powers of darkness. You may not think so. And Satan does not care about you making claims to him. He does not love you. He does not care about you. He don't look, care about us. Satan is like, and that irresponsible parent, he don't care. You don't have to, I don't care about you. I'm not going to show for your recitals. I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I don't care about protecting you. It doesn't change that you're my child. And so it's the same thing with the powers of darkness. You can believe in whatever you want to believe in. As long as you're not believing in God, as long as you're not truly committed to God. As a matter of fact, you could go to church, go to church. Yeah. Go sing on the choir, do whatever it is that you want to do. Because at the core of it, Satan knows you can go into church all you want. You could sing, you could dance, but he knows your heart belongs to me. Oh no, my heart don't belong to the devil. I go to church. I love God. Do you? Because action speaks a lot of their words. As soon as you leave that church, what are you doing? How are you living? And that's who you belong to. As long as people deny these things, and as long as they want to still play pat of cakes and no, they want to be halfway in, halfway out. If you are not in, you don't belong to God. If you're not fully with God, and if you are not trying and you really want him to change you, you belong to darkness. The times when I was going to church and doing all this stuff and still living my life and doing whatever I wanted to do, had I died, I would not have entered into everlasting life. I would not enter into a place of rest. I would have entered into another place. So guys, uh, I wish this video had not gone on so long, but it did. But I will definitely tell you, as long as you 
are denying that the powers of darkness exist. You will be defeated. You will live a fearful life. You will be broken down. And you'll always be confused trying to figure out who, what, when, where, how, and why. It's time to get God in the equation. It's time to communicate with him and ask for his help and his protection in this life so that you can walk out confident. You can send your children to school if you are sending them to school, confident that because they are there, there will be no disasters. There will be no murders. There will be no killings. There will be no kidnappings. Your child is covered under the blood of Jesus. And if God is speaking to you about taking your kids out of school, teaching them whatever, whatever he's talking to you about, then trust him. Then trust him with that process, with jobs, with places to be. Maybe you need to leave the country. Maybe you need to go somewhere else. Maybe you need to take a job. But when you put God in the equation, he will lead you. He will guide you in Every single step of the way, you may have already moved somewhere and you're, you're fearful, you're scared and you're thinking, oh, maybe I need to go back home. Maybe I need to go back to what I've known. But it's a lot of times in these moments that you can set your sights on God and ask him to help you. And you're going to see how you will be able to embrace your new home, new country, new community, and see how he will show up and show out on your behalf. And give you all the connections that you need and the support that you need. You just don't need to be sitting there being afraid. All right, guys. Thank you for listening.